Well, let's go back uh, now to Brussels and join our correspondent, Jack Parrock, who's there now and has been there following this story uh, throughout the day. Jack, uh, what more details do we have at this stage? Well, at the moment, we know that the operations are continuing. We think at least 34 people have been killed, well over 100 injured, and some of them gravely. Uh, I'm sorry for how I am having to hear your communication through a landline. At the moment, our, uh, some communication lines are down, which obviously shows that the operations are continuing, and especially in the area that I'm in, which is only around 800 metres away from the Malbec train station, where that second uh, attack took place, an explosion on a train which uh, saw uh, at least 15 people injured, uh, killed, sorry, and many, many more injured. That came about 9 a.m. local time. Time, an hour before that, up at Zaventem Airport, the main airport that serves the city of Brussels, there were two explosions, one of them believed to be a suicide belt, and we believe that another suicide belt has been found there undetonated, that is unconfirmed at the moment, but we think at least 11 people were killed up there. There's a very eerie quiet on the streets here of the European Union district. Uh, while these operations continue and people are obviously trying to find out whether their loved ones are safe across this city. Have the authorities given any indication whether they believe the attack is over or is there still a, a real threat that there could be more, more attacks throughout the day? They haven't said that the, the, the threat is over, certainly not. They've said that they are continuing their operations to ensure that the city is secure. Now, obviously, Brussels has been a, a real focal point and focus of uh, terror and in Europe and, and terror concerns across Europe following the Paris attacks, were, which were orchestrated out of this city. We saw the Paris attacker, the lead suspect, Salah Abdeslam, arrested in the Molenbeek district of Brussels back on Friday. He's in a prison up in Bruges at the moment, but some, the, some people are speculating that potentially, uh, this is only speculation, that potentially he w may have been able to give uh, investigators information about future attacks, and that's why these have come so suddenly uh, after his arrest. There's been a lot of focus, Jack, on Brussels since the Paris attacks in November. Have today's events come as a surprise for the people of Brussels? Well, the, as soon as uh, uh, Salah Abdeslam was arrested, the Belgian Prime Minister said that they, uh, they had to continue their operations to try to dismantle the uh, terror ring that was uh, operating in Brussels. So certainly there was warnings there, but it's important to note that Belgium has a relatively limited security force and a, a le relatively limited intelligence gathering force. So they've really struggled to be able to, do, to, to have the capacity to deal with these threats and p potentially there will be a lot of criticism against their operations for not preventing this. We don't know exactly what the reasons were for that, but it will be picked apart in the coming uh, days and weeks and months and obviously years in fact. Uh, but really what's important now is obviously f for them is to try and get this city secured and to make sure no further attacks happen here in Brussels, which ordinarily is a very calm and civilised city. Okay, Jack, thank you very much. Jack Parrock there in Brussels.